see we've got, got it cut out. Now we lay them out. Okay, remember the angle piece that we cut. We need to run a saw cut down through here to accept the glass to slide up inside here. So the way you get that is you got this is the side style. You figure out the di distance from here, the in this is the inside edge to where the glass sets. You get that measurement right there which is 13 sixteenths. So your blade would start there and go out. So hopefully you have an eighth inch blade. So we set the blade saw up for 13 sixteenths. On the inside from here to the guide. 13 sixteenths. Now if you want to double check it, You get one of your you get one of your side styles and put against your blade and it should clear. You can see it clears. Okay, here's our angle side. This is the inside. There's the cut. Now you need to make sure that you have an eighth of an inch or bigger, what we call a kerf, K-E-R-F, so that the glass will slide up in there. Okay, the two side styles, you don't do anything to them. You're done until we get ready to put it together. The bottom rail which is this one. Remember now, now we have to do that lap joint again like we did on our casement window. So we need this distance again from our guide to the blade again. So in other words, we have to raise the blade up to come to the top of this to cut this area out. This is the only see here's our glass rail and here's our there's our lap joint. Alright now we'll put it together. We don't do anything to the top check rail. In. Alright. Now this is very important. We know the width is fine. It's, it's a done deal. Now we need the height. Now this is a different situation. Okay, see this is the, the check rail. See there's the angle part. This is on the outside. This is the outside of the window. Your glass is going to 
slide it's going to set in here and come up approximately an eighth of an inch up inside this check rail and that slice that so-called kerf that we did a minute ago as you remember now when it all goes together you'll you'll have a better look but i'm just trying to explain this to you as we move along so you know the width the width is fine the height and the only reason I'm saying that is because this is where you need to adjust the height of the bottom rail. If you're going to reuse, be reusing old glass. Okay, I hope I made that clear enough because see what happens is this goes on the side. Okay, now I've turned it around. I've turned it around and put the check rail at this end so you can see what I'm talking about. The glass sits in here, goes up in here, and it slides up into that groove about an eighth of an inch. So whatever the height of your window is, and the bottom rail is to your top rail, you want to make sure that you adjust it to where the glass will slide up in this groove an eighth of an inch so that the glass is not sitting here loose. Okay, now if you were doing an upper window, it's basically the same thing. The only difference is, is that what you did on your bottom rail, you're going to have to do on your side rails. And I'll show you why. So we're going to set the saw back up and cut this out. Two more lap joints. Okay, now that we've done them, you can look how our lap joints on our side styles go up and lap in to our upper check rail that is an inch and a half wide. I'm going to turn them over so you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, you can see the difference. This is inch and three eighths. This is the upper check rail, which is an inch and a half. And the only reason you have this clearance is so that when your other check rail, which would be your lower check rail, slides so that it doesn't interfere scraping the upper window sash. As you can see, I'm just kind of holding it off to the edge. You've got about an eighth of an inch clearance, eighth to a quarter of an inch. But that's the reason this is an inch and a half. Okay, now once you get all these done, then it's just a matter of screwing everything together. And we're going to screw it together basically the same as we did the casement window just a minute ago. Okay, we've got our window just like we did our casement window. Now notice... How the check rail is set, the angle is facing toward the top. You can see it's facing toward the top, going in, and this is the back of the window. 
And then of course, that's our bottom. We do a dowel at the top on each side. A couple of screws at the bottom on this side. A couple of screws at the bottom on this side. And here again, you want to put them in deep enough so that if you if you have to trim the window down you won't hit the screws. If you set them in, you know, five eighths, three quarters of an inch deep, even one inch is fine. Dowels are better. The only reason I'm using the screws is because it takes too long to, to set up and show you that. But screws are fine, dowels are better. And then you get the other window and then you see where the where the stripping is. Is if you can remember an old window sash, you just set up your table saw to run that weather stripping groove. Which is usually seven eighths to an inch and an eighth. In other words, that's the width of the groove. Is a, a free, is an eighth of an inch thick. So if you can set up and, and cut the groove for your metal weather stripping, goes on the sides, the bottom, and the other side. And that's it, nothing along the top. Alright, now you can see what I'm talking about. About how your glass, when it's going to slide up in there, it's going to slide up inside that groove an eighth of an inch. And I'm going to get a piece and show you. Okay. The glass, as you can see, sliding up in there eighth of an inch. That's the reason you have that check rail running across from side to side. It's so that when this glass is sitting here, it's not loose. You have to have something for it to fit in. So that's why the bottom of your rail to the top of your side style plus an eighth of an inch. After you do one or two of these, you'll figure it out pretty quick. Okay, we're going to assume that you have everything sanded on all the inside and outside edges. Everything's done. Now is when you get your router and the bit you want to use. And then you're going to run around the edge. Now this is the part that's going to be on the inside of the house. So you need to make sure that the bit you're using is what you want. A uh, 532nd Roman OG is about the closest thing to an original window in the old houses. Now if it's the older ones, such as what you've seen in Hollywood Western movies, that's more of a round over bit. So it's just kind of like a little corner, quarter round, round, uh, a quarter round, there we go. So, but we're going to use a 532nd Roman OG, and we're just going to run around the outside edge. Also remember, safety. Alright, the uh, first thing to do when you're using a router around a, your finished product is you want to let the router pull you around. As you well know, running a router, you're supposed to go against it pushing against you. Well, in this case, we're going to go let it kind of pull us around the outside perimeter to get rid of the first layer of stock so that when we go back around it, there's less chance of something blowing out. One thing we don't need is any blowouts on our finished product. 